Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about a new discovery of a very interesting binary star, but also about possibly the future of our beautiful planet Earth. Anyway, let's talk about these and you'll find out how these two topics are related. Welcome to What The Math. So what you're looking at right now is actually a pretty famous star. This is a triple star, but you can only see two here because these two are very, very close together and the third star is actually quite uh, farther away. And this is a star by the name of H.W. Virginis. This is what's known as an eclipsing binary because if you actually look at it from a certain angle and if you kind of move away a little bit, it will appear as a single star that kind of changes in luminosity once in a while because obviously one star covers the other once in a while. And these two stars are actually very close together and orbit almost touching. So there's quite a lot of cool things going on here. But this is not the object we're going to be taking a look at today. We're actually looking at a newly discovered uh, eclipsing binary of this particular type also known as HW Vera type, um, and this eclipsing binary has a name of HS2231-2441. I'm going to actually recreate this in Universe Sandbox just so you can see what it looks like, because it doesn't actually exist in Space Engine just yet. And this particular system kind of consists of the following. So first of all, there is actually a white dwarf that's about 35 to 36% masses of our own sun. And uh, it's, a, it's an object known as HS2231 plus 2441. And around it there is um, an object that goes in a single orbit in about three hours. Now this object is what we would call a brown dwarf. Here I'm going to actually just place a random object that's going to represent uh, this situation. But the thing is, this object actually has a mass of approximately... 35-ish um, masses of Jupiter, so here we kind of have to make it bigger. And you'll see that they're so close together that they're practically almost touching. Now, as a matter of fact, I have a feeling that this object is going to start falling apart because it's so close to the white dwarf, although in reality it's not really happening. They seem to have a stable um, orbit around one another. So let's, let's actually let it go and uh, let's see what it looks like. So this is what we've discovered. This very unusual binary system has been very recently discovered by Brazilian scientists. Oh, look at that. Yeah, I was right. It's falling apart. It's being siphoned away by the white dwarf. Uh, but yeah, the scientists who discovered it uh, have been studying it for something like eight years, since 2005. Um, and this was in uh, Pico dos Dias Observatory in Brazil. And when they've discovered this object, they actually were quite surprised to find such a small in terms of mass binary system. Now, the interesting fact about it is not that it's, you know, a white dwarf and a brown dwarf, which of course is um, a never materialized star, of course. The interesting thing here about this very unusual binary system is how it was actually formed and how it came to be. And today we're going to discuss this because there's actually a kind of a slight chance that maybe, just maybe, this is potentially what our own solar system might look like one day. This, for all intents and purposes, could actually be the future of Earth. Now, obviously, it's not super likely, but it is a possibility, because once I reconstruct this from scratch, you'll see that it's actually how um, Earth might end up as well. So anyway, this is all beautiful. Let's go rewind time by a few billion years, when the star was still very sun-like, and uh, this planet was very possibly Earth-like. And welcome to the system of that particular star several billion years ago. Here is the star, which I just named Old Star. Very creative. And here's the planet called Old Planet. And you'll notice that this planet resembles our beautiful Earth. Don't ask why. Just does. Anyway, so they're actually at a distance relatively similar uh, to where... Earth is from the Sun. So as a matter of fact, this star was very Sun-like and this distance was very Earth-like. So this is, if you'll, you'll see in a second, it's actually inhabitable zone. Approximately one astronomical unit away from the star. As the star started getting older, it 
slowly transitioned into a stage known as the um, Red Giant stage. Now, this is where things get interesting. We know today, and you probably know if you watched a lot of videos on this channel, that at some point our sun is actually going to expand and become tremendously, tremendously large. It's actually going to change into what's known as a red giant. When the um, hydrogen and helium starts to expand and the outer shell of our sun starts to grow so much that it's actually going to envelop Mercury, it's also going to envelop Venus, and it might even envelop Earth or at least reach the position where Earth is today. So, and this is what we're kind of trying to recreate here. So it's basically growing uh, over a period of several million years. And uh, it doesn't increase in mass, don't get this wrong. It just, it's growing in size because uh, its density is increasing and the pressure um, in size is increasing as well, but the gravitational attraction is not enough to maintain the previous shape. So it's kind of becoming less and less dense. You can see the density here is dropped by several million times. And then it becomes this huge red giant stage. And this is where our story begins. Okay, it kind of swallowed my earth. Not very good. I went too far. Let's put another earth here just so I can show you what I'm trying to recreate here. So right now my old planet is practically on the edge of this humongous gas bubble. And as you can imagine, because it's so close to the bubble, it starts attracting a lot of these materials into it. It actually starts serving kind of like a siphon. It, it's, uh, as it moves around the star, uh, it basically starts absorbing the hydrogen from the star, and there, there it comes, and basically starts growing in size. So essentially, what ends up happening is this. So the actual object starts growing larger and larger and larger because it's essentially siphoning off the outer shell of the old star. And as that happens, the actual uh, star starts growing smaller and smaller in size because it now has started to lose a lot of its material. So it basically begins to shrink as the planet continuously siphons away the, uh, the outer shells here. And basically, as it does so, because it's actually moving through the actual material, it's, it's, it's moving through this gas, uh, it's also losing its speed. And here we're talking about orbital velocity. And it's moving closer and closer to the center of the star. So it's kind of a, a very unusual balance between siphoning off the outer shell by essentially just decreasing the size of the star and growing in size, growing in mass, and of course, then moving closer and closer to uh, the center of the star. Now, this probably lasted for a, you know, a few million years, possibly a few hundred thousand years, and eventually what ended up happening is that uh, this star didn't really have any more mass left to maintain the, the outer shell, and so as it decreased in size, it just kind of threw off the outer shell and then turned into a white dwarf or essentially exposed its core and created this very, very beautiful white object with a temperature of about 28,000 degrees. And the planet that was orbiting around this object went from being a more of a planetary object to at first a gas giant and then finally, let's actually just turn into gas giant right away. And then finally into a brown dwarf when it increased its mass to about 35 masses of uh, Jupiter. So this planet is now essentially what we see in real life. And here we go. This is what the system looks like now. Now, whether this actually is going to happen to our beautiful Earth is, of course, a big mystery and a big gamble. But there is a slight chance because we know that when the sun expands, it will actually have its outer shell right at the area where our beautiful Earth orbits. So maybe it will not get swallowed, but instead it will siphon off gas and turn into a gas giant as well. So for all we know, this might be actually the future of our um, solar system. And of course, this might be the unusual yet very cool looking future Earth. 
about 35 masses of Jupiter, very, very high in gravity and full of really cool stuff. And this is our tiny partner, the Sun. Now this system will actually stay uh, the same for quite a while and it will probably survive for many, many billions of years. And it's also possible that this object actually uh, is located in the region where it gets just enough of actual heat. Unfortunately, I can't show it to you here. Enough heat for it to maintain um, basically warm conditions. So if it has any moons there, they might even have nice terrestrial conditions. Although at this distance, it seems that it's a little bit too hot here. So around 350 degrees Celsius. Um, so that's a little bit hot. If it is a little bit farther away though, it might actually be in the habitable zone and thus even have liquid water if there are any moons around it. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. I wanted to introduce this unusual system known as HS2231 plus 2441, discovered in 2017 and explain how this actually might be the future planet Earth. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Thank you for watching and subscribe if you still haven't. Space out. And as always, bye bye. And in the meanwhile, in another universe, this white dwarf decided to explode. And what happened to this beautiful planet? Well, nothing good. <laughs>